Many years ago, when I was lecturing, you know, uh, I kept telling the children, I kept telling the uh, students who were coming for teacher training, eh, do this, do this, this is how you must do this, that, and the other. Then suddenly one day I had a feeling which grew stronger and stronger that I myself had left the classroom many years earlier and that as time goes by children change, the circumstances change and things like that and so I spoke to my principal you know at the teachers college yeah? I said uh, I want to go and teach in a school primary or secondary I don't mind he was shocked he said, you want to go and teach, and then you're going to be continue lecturing and you're going to teach as well. I said, yes, can you arrange for me to go off one day a week or twice a week or something like that? And he said, that would be a very unusual thing to do. But I could raise it up with the ministry, with the PERMSEC and see, because no one has ever asked us this before. So let's see what can be, whether it can be done. So they, they rang and they spoke to each other. Next thing I knew, they had asked me to uh, go and meet up with someone at the ministry. I won't mention names, la, that's not right. Go and meet up with someone at the ministry. So I went to the ministry and then, so this person, a very nice man, you know, he said, I hear you want to go back to school and teach. After being a lecturer and all that, I said, yes, I've been lecturing, telling them what to do, but I haven't done it myself for such a long time. I want to have the experience again. And he said, oh, I see, okay. Then he listened to me. Then he said, okay, I'll call you back after a while. So he called me back then. I said, yeah, what is it? What? Then he said, yeah, there are two schools. Very happy to have you. We're very willing for you to go in. I said, oh. Then he said to me, <laughs> There's a vacancy in RI, and there's a vacancy by coincidence in your old school, RGS. I said, they don't need me, I don't want to go to, not that I don't want to help them, but I don't think I want to go and teach in RI or in RGS. I want to teach in a neighborhood school, where children really need help, you know. So, he said, are you sure? I said, yes, I want to teach in a neighborhood school. So he said, okay. Then I, very patient man, you know, I must say that. So next thing I knew, the ministry called me back, you know. So they said, which is the nearest school to you? So I said, I don't mind how far I have to go. I can always get transport. Anyway, I went to a neighborhood school. And I met the principal. And he said, what's this? I hear you want to come and teach in my school. After being a... And he was not very comfortable. He was wondering what I was up to, you know. So I told him, no, I really mean that. So he said, okay. Then he said to me, uh, you come back uh, in a few days. I will talk to my senior teachers, the vice principal and all that, and we we'll arrange for something for you. So after, uh, I forget how long it was, a short while later, they, I went back, you know. And, uh, you know, which class do you think they put me in? Second. The top class. I said, no way. I want to teach the weakest class. I want to be a teacher in the weakest class in the school. They were shocked. He said, but you have a lot of headache and a lot of problems. I said, that's exactly what I want to have. Otherwise, I'm not fit to be a teacher. I'm not fit to tell other people how to teach. Okay, went back again. So I went back, and uh, and I said, I asked them how many classes they had, and they said they had 13 classes, 4J. My name is Jasmine, and eh? J is 4J. I always remember it. There's 4J. 
So I went and taught 4J. And the principal was bitter. You won't believe it. There were 39 boys. I think about 39 boys, if I'm not mistaken. And four girls. And uh, I spoke to every student individually. I sent for the parents. I spoke to either father or mother. After school, I said, I'm not allowing your child to go home until the homework has been done. I've arranged for a place where they can be sit quietly and do the work they need to do. You all take me back. You won't believe it. The 4J became better than 4A. Those 39 boys. And you know, for years, they kept in touch with me. And some of the naughty boys and girls that I taught in school still in touch with me. Some of them have become professionals, doctors. You won't believe it. Uh, one day I was in uh, Holland Village. A girl came up, you know, and she said, she came up to me and she said, Teacher! I said, oh, hello. And she said, can I hug you? I said, here. I said, not necessary. She said, she said I want to hug you one second. Hug me. I said, okay, just hug me then. She said, if it had not been for you, I would not be here today doing the things I'm doing. So teachers are make... Uh, are very important in the lives of children and other. The care, not how smart you are as a teacher, but the, the feeling that you care about the children. <laughs>